Oh, hi, how's it going? Elliot here again. Today's video is sponsored by CDK Offers, which is a keys website. And you're probably thinking, what does keys have to do with retro tech? Well, the answer to that is it doesn't have a lot. However, sponsored videos are quite important for channels that are the size of mine to keep me going and keep me afloat. So let's take a quick look at that website and then we'll crack into the video. CDK Offers is a website where you can buy keys, cards, and games for all of the major platforms available. I'm more familiar with ones like Steam, so let's have a quick look on there. You can see that Just Cause 4 is discounted by around $20, and when you go ahead and click buy it now, you can buy them through PayPal. Now that is a pretty important thing for people buying things online and not on the actual hardware itself. If you're into modding, you might like making computers. Windows 10 is a key which you can buy very, very inexpensively on here, and using code TRF25, you can get a further discount. Thank you very much for listening to that. Now, back to the video. Hey everyone, how's it going? Edit here again. Today's video is going to be slightly different. I have eight drawers of um, Game Boy components that are all really, really dirty and need a massive, massive clean. When I am in need of something like a battery contact or a D-pad rubber or an A and B um, rubber or A and B buttons, I come into my parts drawers and grab one. However, a lot of them are very, very dirty. You can see here they collect dirt and grime over the years and years of being used. Other ones don't need that much of a clean. You can just get a little toothbrush out and give it a scrub and then it's fine. But it takes up a lot of time and all I wanna do is just come into this bin, grab a D-pad rubber without a load of uh, green gunge on it and bits of dust and stuff, and then just crack on with the restoration. So to solve this problem, hopefully, I'm not actually entirely sure yet, I bought myself one of these. Now this, you're probably wondering, what is a GT Sonic? It looks like some sort of a Sonic Mania bumper collector's edition set. This is an ultrasonic cleaner, and I'm incredibly excited for that because that sounds very, very cool. So here it is. Let's go ahead and take the uh, bag off. Looks a little bit like a, um, a kind of kettle stand. It's got a little power button on the front there, and it's not got a... Uh, very sturdy base, which is a little bit concerning because I think this thing uses like, I don't know, wa wavy vibrations to work. But anyway, um, it hasn't got a way of, oh, there we go. Okay, so that goes in there and then that sits on there and then you press start and then something happens. Excellent. You wouldn't be able to get a Game Boy shell in there, but, okay, I completely take that back. You can definitely get a Game Boy Color shell in there, and that means you can get a Game Boy Pocket shell in there too, and maybe even a Game Boy Light or something, but um, you wouldn't be able to get a DMG in there. You could get Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Advance SP, so pretty good. I also bought some of this, and this is an oxidation removal ultrasonic solution for removing oxidation from metals, including iron, copper, tin, aluminium, and stainless steel. So what I was hoping this would be able to do is clean up all of the nasty contacts that I have uh, in my parts bin. So I think we'll start off with those. That'll probably be the most like evident change if there is actually a change at all. And then we'll move on to things like the buttons. So the way that it works is it uses um, apparently tiny vibration and then cavitation and then the debris come off. So it's guess it's kind of going to be like an erosion type thing. It'll take off the uh, you know, the, the gunk and whatnot that's on the top. So operation, open the lid and fill the stainless steel tank with water. Put the object in the water. The object should be completely immersed. Do not exceed max level. Close the lid, put the device on the base, connect the power and then press the button and the blue indicator lights up. To start, five minutes working time. Okay, so that means we only need it for five minutes. If you'd like to stop cleaning during five minutes working time, simply press the button again. After the clean process is finished, unplug the power cord, open the lid and remove the object. Yeah, because having water near... Uh, near electrics isn't ideal, oh God, but it does use the same um, kind of thing as a kettle does. Concentrate is added at, to a water rate of one part concentrate to 10 parts water. Okay, here we go. Scientist Elliot here to uh, make a video on some chemicals. So I'm gonna pour this in. I haven't filled it up to max because I don't really feel like it needs to be that high. 
that feels to me like one part and then 10 parts, but I could be completely wrong and then something very, very bad is about to happen. I'm not gonna pour these all in because there's like little bits of blue corrosion sat at the bottom of my, um... actually, yeah, screw it, let's just go, all in. Right, lid on. And then we press the start button. Well, that was an absolute anti-climax. I can actually see some things happening. Pretty interesting. Oh yeah, this, this doesn't work. I'm a little bit scared because it smells a little bit weird, but let's go ahead and uh, take out a couple of these um, things and see how they're doing. So I guess it's quite difficult because I can't really compare what these look like before and after because I didn't get a um, you know picture of each one of them. But you can see this one's come out looking pretty good. You can see where there's kind of raised chrome plating from uh, where there was some corrosion. So potentially that one has worked quite well. I'm seeing quite a lot of like brown and you can see here on, on this one especially. But what I'm thinking I might do is just give this thing one more wash. So we'll put this on for one more cycle and see if it makes uh, any difference having it on for one more cycle. Okay, so here we go. It's been through the second cycle and I'm not really seeing a massive, massive difference to uh, any of the really, really bad ones that we were looking at before. If I take a quick look at this one, for example, uh, the back of it is still getting that weird kind of brown um, color tint to it. Um, but that being said, I have faith that a lot of these would actually work. Um, some of them have still got that brown underneath, but that what that probably is is actually where the... Um, the corrosion has eaten all the way through uh, underneath. But see, ones like this, this was covered in blue before, and uh, it really has come out enough that that would be, that would be perfectly usable. Um, it's definitely made a big difference to the, uh, to the Game Boy Pocket ones. I don't know if they were using anything different there, but I had some really, really manky ones um, of those, and these all seem to be more or less perfect now. I can't actually find any that are terribly bad besides uh, this one and this one I think was essentially more corrosion than metal at, at the uh, final stages of this one's life but um, even that one I still think would probably work it'll be interesting to see now um, if we start to see a difference uh, with some of the, the the button contacts and membranes so I think what I'll do is I'll empty this out um, I won't be using the same corrosion liquid uh, that I put in this one I'll just be using water so let's go ahead and do that with these and see if we get any difference uh, with these bits and bobs. So I'm going to try and be a little bit more methodic when picking out these next ones because in the other ones I kind of just chuck them all in. So I'm going to try and find some of the dirtiest and grimiest um, kind of components from each uh, bin if you will and we'll drop them all in there and then when we take them out we'll be able to see if there's actually a substantial difference um, effect that this, this thing has had on it. Let's go ahead and put the lid back on. I should point out that in here now is just water and we'll go ahead and press start on that. Some of them haven't actually like gone to the bottom of the um, water, which is probably not great. I don't know how to go about doing that. But we shall let that do its thing and see what happens after five minutes. All right, so the five minutes has now passed and let's have a look at what we have. So here is the little uh, connector cover for the um, multiplayer games and yet yeah, not a lot has happened to that. Here is the D-pad rubber, and again, nothing has happened to that. You could probably uh, wipe that off now, and it would um, it'd be all right, but I was expecting this to do a little bit more. I should point out that this is obviously just water. Maybe using it with a bit of soap would, uh, would work a little bit better. We'll try that in the next one. Here's the, uh, the D-pad. Again, not a lot has happened to that. I'm going to empty this water out, and I'm going to put some uh, fairy liquid in there, and then we'll do these all again and uh, see if that makes a difference. All right, five minutes later, and here we are. So let's see if the fairy liquid and slightly warm water made a difference at all. So let's go ahead and grab out that Game Boy Advance D-pad. Here it is. I'm not seeing a complete difference, 
But I wonder if, oh, but what I do wonder is if that dirt is now loosened up enough that if you were to uh, take a toothbrush to it and lightly scrape it, if it would come off, yeah, look at that. It does actually now come off incredibly easy. But that being said, you would expect this to do that for you. And that's kind of the whole point you would be buying this. The D-pad uh, rubbers are now like immaculately clean. They look brand new. Uh, as do the A and B buttons. So the fairy liquid and the slightly hot water has done a lot of work. What I'm gonna do is dump all of these in here and um, see if we can, oh God, oh no, that's not gonna be good. I'm not sure if I'm overloading this. At this point, there's quite a lot of things in here. But yeah, we should see how it goes. Just gonna give him a little stir. I'm not sure why having too many would work or wouldn't work. So let's just give that a bash and see what happens. All right, so a little bit of time has passed and I've put them through the cycle. I then rinsed them all off uh, in the sink. And my goodness me, does it look like I have a bunch of just brand new contacts and rubbers in here? And uh, yeah, it looks absolutely amazing. They're all gonna need a, a dry because they're all obviously still a little bit wet, but they look incredible. They look brand new, honestly. Um, this has actually made a substantial difference. I lost a little bit of um, kind of faith in this thing when we just put it in with water, with uh, cold water and no soap. And now they look great. You know, I can go ahead and um, dry them all off and put them back into their respective container. And um, yeah, I will be able to use all of these now and I won't have to worry about cleaning them all. Um, it's just gonna be a case of reaching in there, grabbing the one I need and off I go. It also seems like the, the stickers that are on the um, power switch caps, they're all still intact. So you'll be all right to, uh, to chuck them in there with them on. And uh, yeah, absolutely excellent. Now I just need to find a mass way to dry them all off really. That sums it up then. I hope you have all enjoyed this experimental video. Um, if you would like to check this out, I will leave it in the uh, description below and uh, I will catch you in the next video where I'll probably be refurbishing and repairing this Game Boy Color that doesn't play games. It just gets as far as that and then nothing happens. So I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.